Welcome to Okami Sigma Universe. This is your Sensei Julius Ochoa sharing our journey and information to help guide humanity move into higher states of consciousness. So for today, what I'd like to talk about is, um, well, what got me uh, inspired to make this particular uh, video is uh, I encountered this woman online. Uh, I was in TikTok and um, at first, uh, I saw this woman as uh, like uh, a, a person with uh, high confidence and uh, who's uh, an influencer that uh, might be speaking truth. Uh, but leading to this, uh, before I continue, I'd like to talk about uh, the importance of... Uh, spirituality and how it is uh, uh, how it is now consumed by uh, people as a commodity which uh, to me I totally disagree now again going back to my story uh, I encountered this uh, woman online uh, I'm not gonna say her name uh, so what I realized is that uh, with the way uh, she was talking about spirituality and, and offering um, her services as a spiritual coach, um, the title was Spiritual Entrepreneur. Okay, I myself am an entrepreneur, but... I don't correlate my spirituality with my entrepreneurial endeavors. Uh, I keep that separate, okay? So just to be clear, uh, when I create my products, uh, it may be spiritually in inspired, but it's, not, it's more of addressing a need, rather a need for a product, rather than selling spirituality itself okay so there's a big difference so in in some of the videos that she had she had um well what she's talking about is very logical and very reasonable stuff however when it came down to uh how she would invite people to join her in her very unique spirituality, I got a little bit kind of uh, turned off. And the reason being is because it gave me church vibes. <laughs> okay, so for the people who know me, I, I don't like the churches. And I don't like... Uh, the uh, the way of the uh, religious approach is uh, doing to people when it comes to spirituality and um, our God or what we are appropriately call should call is our ancestors and our uh, great creator now i know that most of you out there uh the people out there who are listening uh majority of you most probably 80 to 85 percent of you are conditioned by the church and uh by some uh fake white jesus uh movement <laughs> so be prepared if you're not ready to uh to hear the truth that I'm about to speak to you about, you know, you can click off and move, move along and scroll upwards or whatnot or uh, watch another video, okay? So what I'm about to say might be, uh, you know, might give you a certain area or certain degree of existential crisis if you're a type of person who has been conditioned 
by the churches since you were young. Okay. I myself had that experience when I was young. I was uh, totally immersed in those uh, religious uh, activities and groups until uh, my guides started to, um, you know, uh, re-educate me. <laughs> my spirit guides, my ancestors start to re-educate me and realign me to the divine. Now, what uh, going back to my story, what the uh, this woman was talking about is uh, joining is uh, her special spirituality uh, uh, process, wherein it was okay at first, but then she started slandering, uh, well, subtly slandering tarot readers fortune tellers etc etc people who are divinely guided by spirit to deliver uh divine messages and then claims that it's not her tools or it she's not she's got nothing against it but she already attacked uh the spiritual practitioners who have been uh, gifted uh, the ability of intuition and foresight. Now, I got to take a closer look at it. And so, because I'm, I want to be fair, I'd really like to study uh, with people and learn from them. But of course, we need to have discernment when it comes to... Uh, in anything, actually, when it comes to people, how we deal with people, when it comes to organizations, when it comes to our social activities, we need to have discernment. And this is highly important because we might associate and join uh, or crusade even for people who don't have our best interest at heart. Now, now what I really what I really feel strongly about is uh, that when uh, this woman claimed that uh, her type of spirituality is unique and um, that uh, it is separate from uh, the rest of the spirituality, and then she goes over about. Uh, being able to teach people and award them sovereignty. So at that point, I was like, I'm ready to disconnect on this, uh, uh, this thing uh, that she's trying to sell me because, or sell other people for that matter, because I strongly believe that spirituality and divinity and even sovereignty cannot be bought or sold. So I'm really against people who try to commodify spirituality uh, through like a form of religious practice wherein you're owed to pay somebody uh, a certain amount of money uh, for some sort of service that uh, is really non-existent. I mean, if you really think about it, uh, listen to what I'm about to say. If you really think about it, it's like people who would sell you your own watch. You know, people in, well, basically religion is business. It's a type of business. And that's the harsh reality that we need to uh, accept and awaken into that uh, religion is connected to everything but because it's created as a business and this is a business that commodifies the word god okay uh which to me is uh if you ask me it's really fooling people uh and uh, trying to coax people to uh, monetarily surrender 
uh, into ideas that are actually just basic pickpocketing. Okay? So, having said that, uh, as for me, uh, when, when I talk about spirituality, it's in general wherein everybody's included. And spirituality is something that is not separate from you. It is who you are. <laughs> That's the hard truth. Spirituality is who you are. Whether you're a good person or a bad person, spirituality is who you are. And if you fall for these type of people who try to sell you God or our our creator or our ancestor. Now, that's really uh, trying to, you know, pull the wool over your eyes. Why? Because the creator is part of you. Your ancestors are part of you. Spirituality is not separate from any sentient being that is in this physical reality and beyond this physical reality. And this is something that people must and should understand in order for, ne for them to not be fooled by opportunists and those who try to uh, trick people into paying for their spirituality. Now, if you're the type of person who wants to pay for your spirituality, go ahead. But what I'm telling you is that you're wasting your money and these people who do this are false. Okay? Now, why am I saying that? Uh, because I had experience uh, all throughout my life. Uh, I, I'm a truth seeker. So I've experienced different kinds of people who try to fool others to give them money in exchange for some sort of awarded title of spirituality, which is not good, okay? It's not good. It's not good for you financially. It's not good for you mentally. And it's not good, definitely not good for you spiritually, okay? So I'd like to warn people about these uh, so-called spiritual entrepreneurs, so-called spiritual coaches, so-called uh, priests, nuns, and religious groups, okay? Don't be pickpocketed or robbed by these people who try to sell you ideas and concepts that are only there to reach out and grab your money, you know? Uh, be discerning with uh, the people whom you trust with regards to these topics and who you discuss your spirituality with or try to uh, learn from because there's a lot of disinformation uh, swimming out there. So I want to be the one to tell people and inform you to be careful with these kinds of approaches. Okay, so, okay, that's spirituality. And uh, this woman also mentioned about sovereignty. Now, sovereignty, sovereignty is not something you can, you know, uh, buy like it's a, a title or something like that. Sovereignty is your freedom to choose and your Basically, your life, how you live your life, that's sovereignty. And if you have to pay for your sovereignty, then maybe you're not sovereign at all. <laughs> you might be a slave like the rest of the world. <laughs> Almost 90% of the world is uh, into modern slavery. And uh, that's the sad truth. Uh, how we trade our time, our lives for uh, meaningless pursuits wherein somebody else profits over us and we exchange our lives for somebody else's uh, endeavors, okay? So 
that's the re- that's the very reason why our the humanity uh, okay humanity itself here in this planet is not evolving as fast as it should be or as in a rate where it should be because we sell ourselves short and we uh, are conditioned to embrace this modern slavery and uh, aside from talking about these uh, fake spiritual coaches that uh, try to commoditize spirituality in your daily life, uh, when you're in your job, you, you just got to look at, uh, you just, you know, try to pause and look at your work environment. Uh, do, how do you see yourself uh, within 5, 10 years or even by the time that, do you see yourself doing the same thing by the time um, you're like 60 or 70, Right. So this is something that you, you, uh, you would really need to be uh, careful with because this is your life. And um, from my experience, uh, with regards to religion and corporations, they work together. Government, churches, religions, you know, and these corporations are all in it. Masses and the vast majority of people are easily coaxed by people who try to commodify or or try to uh, just get you into this uh, whole money worship uh, concept by tricking you that uh, what they're selling is god or the creator or what they're selling is spirituality or what they're selling you is your freedom you can't sell something to a person that they already have naturally that came when they were born (laughs) okay so be careful with the with these kinds of people that are out there who are taking advantage of people who are weak-minded, taking advantage of people who are confused. I when I was a uh, when I was let me just share a bit when I was before we go into concepts and uh, principles uh, of spirituality. When I was young, I was so into the religious uh, activities. Uh, I sang in church. I uh, I I read the Bible and I study a lot. And um, my entire family is into this Catholic thing. And then I started uh, when my guide started uh, try to guide me uh, and uh, see to see you know, to see the higher perspective. You know. I started getting more curious and started asking questions. And like any other uh, person in this uh, Catholic thing, I was shut down with all my questions. (laughs) I was shut down. And these questions are all legitimate uh, to clarify the holes that are you know, not making sense in the narrative that they are selling us in these religious churches. So I opted to look to, towards alternatives of the same faith, like uh, other groups that may have a different point of view. But it turns out uh, it's the same thing. You know, it's the same thing. At the end of the day, it will boil down to how much you'll contribute, uh, how much you will pay. In order to uh, have the title of being part of their group, it's just some sort of uh, club membership that has nothing to do with the divine creator or nothing to do with our ancestors. So our ancestors are very important and the divine creator must be acknowledged and respected in a way wherein, you know, 
you would respect it by not taking advantage of other people and not commoditizing uh, their faith. Now, as I was growing up uh, and experiencing these uh, uh, different organizations, uh, I've been really searching for truth and there were no answers. The answers that I'm getting was just, you know, uh, some regular run-of-the-mill uh, accusation that I don't have a strong faith whenever I start asking questions that they cannot answer. <laughs> because majority of the people in these organizations are primarily programmed and conditioned to repeat and parrot things verbally, verbatimly, that uh, were into this particular program just so that you become a follower and so that you will contribute your time, energy, and money in these wasteful narratives that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? I'm not going to dive into the holes in the Bible and and how uh, people are coaxed to believe uh, these uh, false narratives uh, in, in this false book. Now, so I ventured to other religions and tried to study uh, other religions, and I got the same thing. It's the same thing. It's a business. These uh, religious groups is a business. They're not about the divine creator. They're not about our ancestors. And the worst part is they demonize our ancestors. <laughs> that's the worst part of it. Yeah, that's the worst part. They demonize our ancestors and try to have us forget about our ancestors. Wherein the truth is our ancestors are the ones helping us and guiding us spiritually so that's the big big conundrum that people turn away and would not address because they are fearful that uh, they might be ostracized from these groups who are false so when i when i moved to uh discover spirituality when my guide started uh, uh pointing me to the right direction of course Spirituality is something that you will have to work hard for yourself to discover and to practice in order for you to progress. And the idea is for you to learn karmic lessons and, and break generational curses and traumas created by previous programming so that, uh, and conditioning so that you can progress in life. And to stop the trauma and uh, the uh, atrocities caused by these uh, generational curses uh, created by false narratives, false belief systems that hold humanity back. Okay? All right. So going back to the part wherein uh, how... Some of these people, false people, try to trick you uh, with regards to spirituality and uh, sovereignty. Okay, let's, uh, let's move into sovereignty first. First of all, sovereignty is a legal term. It's used uh, in politics and also uh, political science, wherein it talks about uh, a person's freedom and rights and all of that. However, uh, it can also be applied in spirituality in a sense of uh, describing someone's freedom. But sovereignty cannot be awarded or cannot be bought. You have to remember that. Because sovereignty is who you are. You are sovereign by default. And by default, as soon as you are born, you have that already. It's not something that you have to buy from someone else or someone else to grant you. 
you already have that okay now let's uh take that uh part out because the part wherein spirituality being commoditized is a larger issue okay so i want to give people clarity and guidance with regards to this issue okay so first of all we need to acknowledge how people are often tricked into paying for their faith. Now, what I'm trying to do here is spread awareness so that people will be aware of uh, these uh, fraudsters. <laughs> I call them fraudsters because that's what they are. They're frauds. Uh, a lot of them are fake. A lot of them are trying to uh, look the part, but they don't act the part and they don't know the part. <laughs> okay? They, they have no connection whatsoever uh, with regards to the divine and uh, uh, the universal consciousness because they operate in a lower level of existence. Okay? So once the that spirituality is commoditized it would be uh, like a bargain sale uh, and that's not good okay spirituality can't be a bargain sale for everybody your cultivating your spirituality should be a priority and should be done by the individual in a natural form without other people trying to corrupt them and, and coax them with uh, their lies and their wrong perceptions and their opinions and their uh, false narratives and their controlling uh, uh, type of approach. So there are many, many people who are doing this consciously and unconsciously. And the majority of them are not aware that they're doing this. And... When you try to test them, they can't speak. They're lost for words because they do not know. True faith is the knowing, not the belief. Belief is the path to ignorance. Okay? I want to leave that and impart that to you guys. Belief is the path to ignorance. Knowing and discovering and truth is done by seeking truth, finding your own truth. And from that truth, you will discover other truths. And you will discern these truths from other people, nature, the cosmos, the elements. These are important truths that we need to discover for ourselves. No one can award you these truths. You will have to find it through a spiritual journey. And that's why it's called spiritual journey. Okay, it's, it's not a spiritual awarding ceremony. There's no such thing. It, that thing doesn't exist. If that thing is applied to you, then you are being scammed, basically. Okay. Uh, I had this uh, experience wherein... So, I've already told you about my experiences with religious groups. Uh, it's not limited to just religious groups. Even um, other people who are trying to uh, sell spirituality, spiritual concepts to people, uh, be careful because sometimes they're just siphoning your energy and your finances. Okay, um, it's not limited to churches. It's also this this uh, scam. Also, can be found in meditation groups, uh, groups that are into uh, occults and magics and uh, witchcraft. So be careful where you what you join because <laughs> you might join some some dark coven that uh, would ultimately affect um, your well-being and even your family um, I should know because um, 
I know some of my family members are secretly into dark covens and I know friends and people and lovers who are who joined dark covens uh and at first they have they were not aware until <laughs> the effects destroyed their lives like literally decimated their families um destroyed their their jobs their uh their career their social standing and um you know just destroyed their life entirely so we need that's the urgency that we need um and some of some of the organizations will try to coax these people uh who are unseemingly uh aware that uh they can that these organizations can offer other opportunities like uh uh access to jobs and uh, access to uh other resources such as food and free food and free drinks okay so so if if that is the case uh that uh, these organizations would have to um you know resort to tricking you they will <laughs> they will i uh, i went to a certain uh, foreign meditation school and then i went through their course and there was uh the course was there was a curriculum that i quickly finished because uh, i have uh, spiritual aptitude already it's just that i wanted a i want to, to have a quiet place where i can uh, practice my meditation however uh, as soon as i finished their curriculum they started throwing uh, other tasks that seemed like crazy such as uh, you have to promise that you're not going to run away and etc 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 and then i found out that these uh, this meditation uh, techniques that they're teaching are actually used by um uh Korean prison camps to manipulate prisoners <laughs> so the shock uh i did my research and found out that these techniques that they're trying to employ uh to me and other people were techniques to manipulate prisoners imagine that it has nothing to do med- with meditation it was just to keep prisoners in line and i was so shocked to find that out so i just you know left the whole thing dropped the whole thing because uh they were trying to manipulate myself and other people that i know and what happened was uh the ending result was they divided uh people uh friends started to fight each other and uh, relationships start to break up of people that i know and then before i uh before i left uh people were really convinced that they were you know the that the program was working miracles for them but it wasn't it wasn't it was just uh them trying to satisfy certain desires to think that uh, the meditation practice was uh something that is good for them but it wasn't about the meditation it was actually just the monetary payments they pay uh, expensively every month in order to maintain the lavish uh setting that they're in because you can ima- imagine that uh and the the sad part is that uh certain this is this kind of thing happens in in their country prolific prolifically where in they have really crazy organizations like these and they like uh perpetuate violence and uh try to make people paranoid about uh their their community 
I even found uh, the same type of uh, setting of a group that uh, was able to successfully coax people in uh, Korea wherein they worship guns. <laughs> Imagine that. They worship guns. My goodness. But they use the same techniques that uh, the group, the, the, the same group that I encountered here in the Philippines. They use the same technique that was used during uh, war times in consecration camps, prison camps, to control the prisoners. So this was these techniques were applied by these uh, so-called spiritual groups. So be careful out there because uh, not everybody who claims to be spiritual is, okay? Okay, one thing about spirituality that you need to know is that it's something that uh, you cannot buy. You cannot buy your way into spirituality. You will have to practice and achieve uh, your own enlightenment, your own realizations, your own actualizations, and your own spiritual aptitude, okay? So here's the thing, okay? Listen very carefully. Knowledge can be taught. Spiritual enlightenment, however, cannot. Only through introspection can spiritual enlightenment be seeded, okay? So you have to look, you, re you really have to look from within, and how do you do that? By clearly listening to yourself rather than listening to other people. Okay? Your self-assessment is very important. That is why gurus and masters can only show you how they live and practice their spirituality or gain their wisdom or practice the wisdom that they've gained through experience. But they cannot award you spiritual enlightenment or even uh, transmute their enlightenment to you because you will have to... Spiritual, spirituality's base fundamental is it is achieved by discovering the self, not by being told by other people. Okay, you get what I'm saying? Even if they wanted to, or try to award you certain title of spirituality, they cannot. Okay? The real masters and the real gurus, uh, the real teachers know that for a fact. That's the reason why they're able, once they have imparted the knowledge, they are able to set the student free to gain their own experience and cultivate their own spirituality. So, even for you to pay them a hefty sum, and like, ask some people, I've, I've encountered this, uh, when people try to ask them, how long will it take till I achieve a certain level? <laughs> Which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> it's really hilarious when you see people do that. And now the eyes of the, the scammer is like very widened because, uh, oh, uh, I can just name a certain time frame and just keep extending it until uh, this person loses their financial balance. When there is nothing left for the person to pay and then they, they could eventually quit. And uh, these uh, scammers, spiritual scammers have already profited from them. Okay, which is very sad. So in the end, the student can only live his, his or own life until their experience teaches them the right way to practice their spirituality. Okay, so having said that, spirituality is not like religion. Okay. Most of these scammers sell spirituality in the format of religion. And that's, the, that's one of the red flags you need to watch out for. Okay, So I'm speaking through experience. It's not just that I'm saying this for the sake of saying it. 
I'm speaking through experience. And this is the sad reality that we need to acknowledge um, because uh, there are very few uh, truth seekers out there and true teachers out there. Very few, okay? It takes a certain degree of mastery to be able to translate knowledge. Remember, a person can only impart knowledge, not spirituality, okay? Spirituality is an experience of an individual. Uh, basically, it's the same conundrum with the whole Jesus, fake white Jesus movement, wherein people gravitate to the experience of the so-called white Jesus that is non-existent, actually. <laughs> it was a fraud created by the church. Um, and then they think that by believing the, the that particular name, they're already uh, you know uh, it will rub the spiritual aspect of it will rub onto them that they are good people. They're not <laughs> okay. Uh, there there is a whole rabbit hole with regards to that particular topic uh, in terms of Christianity and Catholicism. It's a really a deep rabbit hole that. Uh, it will take hours for us to uh, to to dive deep in, and some of uh, some some content creators that I know have really dissected this rabbit hole in a sense that uh, they really uh, opened up Pandora's box and for the the Christianity and church, wherein how uh, methodically uh, empires used it against the people to subjugate the people, okay? But that's another topic, okay? So what we're focusing on is the people who try to commoditize spirituality, okay? So spirituality, okay, in a sense, has to be experienced by the individual, okay? Wherein priests and nuns and all of those people in in the churches are all conditioned by memorization. And most likely these fake, false, scamming spiritual coaches and spiritual entrepreneurs are going to do to you is to coax you into memorization and then monetize themselves you know take advantage of you by monetizing themselves for you blindly following uh, a certain unique spiritual practice you know if you're really into spirituality you will um, you will understand uh, once you understand that the connectedness is so deep that everything is one, okay? Wherein the mighty creator is integrated in every single facet of your reality and your existence. But that is something that you'd have to experience yourself. It's a totally different experience when that realization is actualized in your very existence, okay? I can only describe it in words, but once you undergo that process, that's something that you and only you can attain for yourself. That's the type, that's the part where it boosts your confidence. It's not about, uh, it's, not so, it's not so much about uh, certain techniques. There are certain principles you can learn, but there's no guarantee of someone else's technique to work on you. You have to discover what kind of spiritual gifts you have and what type of uh, what type of energies that your vessel, this body that you have, are equipped with. Okay, so you have to dis discover that. I can't over I can't overemphasize that. It's very crucial. 
Okay? The truth seeker journeys to experience the world and through it builds his or her own spiritual aptitude. Okay? You cannot, like, you know, this is a mistake of most uh, these uh, fake spiritual coaches does. You cannot, you know, say that uh, you do this and that, then you're good. No. Spiritual awakening comes from experiences. And the only result or the, the time that you can say that it's an awakening is when you break a certain trauma or generational curse. And to do that, it doesn't require somebody else. It requires yourself. Okay? That's where the empowerment comes from. So, dear friends, do not be fooled by churches, spiritual coaches, meditation teachers, and so-called spiritual entrepreneurs. Spend no single dime on these frauds. Okay? Spirituality is an individual endeavor. Okay? It's not a group effort. Well, it is in a way a collective effort, but it has to be coming from the individual. Even if you join so many organizations, I tell you now, guaranteed, you won't progress if you are in a group. <laughs> I tell you, you won't unlock your spiritual gifts. If you are in a group, because you will tend to conform to the fake teacher and to the rest of the ignorant students. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Your spiritual growth is yours by taking responsibility for yourself and for your loved ones and for the people you care about. The divine is only... Just, you know, waiting for you to just listen and pay attention. And then it speaks to you every single moment of your entire existence. You're just not paying attention. You're so distracted. That's the whole key to this. Not to be distracted. Not to be distracted by fake spiritual coaches that commodify spirituality. You cannot sell spirituality okay the divine you know speaks through your heart your mind and every single living cell in your body the divine connects with you in nature the divine is all around you and inside you okay so what what really set me off was when this uh, fake coach started saying that uh, um, tarot readers, uh, fortune tellers, blah, 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 and all of these uh, uh, divine beings who are trying to help the collective are, you know, people, their clients are codependent. That is not the case. These tarot readers, and diviners are there to just deliver the message. Their, their function is to connect to the divine. They develop a certain ability of a level of intuition that is heightened that allows them to connect to the collective energies of the universe of our creator Okay, and that includes the entirety of the collective, not just uh, one uh, fake uh, god, an old man in the sky. No, not that. It is collective energy. And once the diviner or the tarot reader or uh, you may call them fortune teller, delivers that particular message to that particular individual and they receive it, the healing is instantaneous. They start to realize and the actualization, okay, the seeds are planted to initiate actualization that is 
purely natural. Okay? And also connects to them energetically wherein they are able to change their reality and shift into higher perspectives. That's the role of the tarot readers. You cannot say that there's a certain spirituality that is uniquely for from this person. No. Everybody has their, uh, their spiritual path, but there's no one size fits all. Okay? So you have to realize that there's no one size fits all with spirituality because it's individual. So having said that, I myself uh, try to guide people. I don't accept payments for for readings and, and stuff like that because my goal is to deliver divine messages. Okay, I'm just a messenger. And a messenger's job is to, to clearly impart the message, the divine message. That's it. For this, the individuals that will pick it up randomly or by chance they might uh, encounter my video or something like that. It doesn't matter as long as they heal from the message. That's the whole point of tarot reading. Uh, there's something called a divination abuser, and these are the people who try to uh, in or who try to use tarot or pay for tarot readings in order to spy on people rather than heal themselves. So there's a big difference, and that's the reason why I don't like commoditizing spirituality. Uh, the whole idea of paying for a reading is purely transactional and it's about energetic exchange okay that's where the service is but apart from that the tarot reader doesn't you know tell the client that they will guarantee their spirituality <laughs> that's a whole different story okay so the idea is to just impart the message and allow the knowledge to seed, take seed. And, and the enlightenment will be coming from the individual who receives the message. Now, that's the reason why I told this, I commented on this woman that, that I was talking about. I commented that you don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea of what spirituality is because the diviners are helping people progress by delivering the messages that they are crucially in need to hear so that they can move forward in their uh, spiritual path. But tarot readers are not like churches that they will have to, uh, like, uh, you know, enclose you into a, uh, or fence you out, uh, fence you in to believing something. The spiritual divine people who were tasked to deliver these messages can have, they, they, we actually live our own lives. We have our own lives to live. And we have our own traumas and generational curses to break. So that's, that's another story for the wounded healer, uh, wherein people help each other. That's the whole point. But, by telling people that, hey, join me and uh, you will be saved or uh, you will be spiritual or you will be sovereign when you uh, listen to me. No, that it doesn't work that way. And a lot of my ancestors really <laughs> dislike people like this. Why? Because they mess up the whole, you know, the whole point of spiritual awakening of spiritual growth they're like blocking people from really progressing spiritually okay so me as a creator i make videos to share knowledge okay uh 
people might attack me for sharing uh, divination knowledge because probably they don't understand it and they don't uh, they don't use it fine but when i share this knowledge is for people to try to study themselves and learn themselves i'm i'm not here i'm just a messenger I'm not here to uh, form a religion or, you know, we'll go kumbaya and save, uh, save in the name of somebody who, who really doesn't exist. Uh, we, we don't have to worship some name of, uh, of a fictitious character, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So the idea is that the divine is all around us, inside us, and nobody can sell you your divinity. You cannot buy your divinity because it's already yours. It's yours. Plain and simple. Most importantly, you need to know that the divine being that you are is just simply by expressing yourself into your highest form. What do I mean by that? By thinking divine, speaking divine, you know, speaking truth, and acting divine, okay? Doing what is right. It's as simple as that. If you have to pay for a person to tell you that, there's clearly something uh, you really need to work on. And... Uh, it's something you need to go in introspectingly, you know, go into introspection rather than pay someone else for them to tell you this and that and tell you who you are. If you do that, you are surrendering your freedom, you are surrendering your identity, and you are surrendering into a mold that is not spirituality, okay? So let me say this again. There is no one size fits all in spirituality. Every individual is unique. Everybody has their own divine bestowals. Everybody has their own level of consciousness that they need to work on. So in my channel, our aim is for higher consciousness. And you cannot, and I have to tell you that that thing is not awarded, you know. I can't award you higher consciousness. You have to work for it. You have to do the divine work. If you don't do that and you don't try to look at yourself uh, in the mirror and uh, try to see yourself for who you are and try to see what you want to become, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to pay anybody to tell you who you are. And uh, the realization will come through life's experiences and challenges. And that molds a very strong, you know, that builds, sorry, let me change that term, that builds a very strong foundation when you acquire your spiritual growth through overcoming adversities, through breaking generational, generational curses, through overcoming your traumas. Okay? And I can tell you that you will have to do that by yourself. You will have to walk into that door by yourself. Okay? And that takes courage. And courage cannot be, you know, part of the curriculum. Courage is only acquired when you face situations. But until you are ready to face your situations, then courage is just at the back seat. You know, courage takes a back seat. That's it. It's as simple as that. No complications. You face your situation with courage, you know, that's overcoming fear. And that's something that you gain through experience. 
life will have to teach you that. No guru can teach you that. Even the gurus will tell you, okay, uh, this is the knowledge and bye-bye. And then if you try to insist, they would say, what do you want from me? <laughs> you have to do it yourself. <laughs> okay? The real teacher will set the student free by imparting knowledge, but not uh, trying to coax them into a certain entitlement. So again, there's no one size fits all. There is no one secret formula. There's no, you know, there's no uh, particular course that you can just take and then it solves all your problems. No, there are many ways to scale a mountain, okay, or climb a mountain, okay. So what's uh, what's let's talk about red flags. So what's a sure sign that the person is deceitful? Okay, that they're trying to trick you on something. It is when they try to dismantle someone or something, okay, so that they will look favorable, okay, so that you they will be the preferred. Now, this is when uh, this is when the business aspect comes in. So. Like this person that I encountered says, spiritual entrepreneur. That particular thing is uh, trying to make a transaction over your spirituality. Would you like that? <laughs> I personally won't. Okay. So they try to dismantle things that they don't understand. And they didn't, have, they didn't even make a, any kind of uh, uh, understanding of the, the things that they're talking about. And they try to tear down people who are not even playing the same game of uh, tearing them down, you know. So that's when you that's when your discernment kicks in. You have to question why is this person uh, trying to belittle, sub subconsciously try to uh, uh, attack a certain group. Okay, that can also apply to me. You can question me. Why Why am I saying this and that? That's okay because the truth is not afraid of being questioned. But those who are false are afraid of being questioned. They are afraid because they cannot answer and they cannot give you the truth because the truth will reveal their mask. They're wearing a mask. Okay, so remember that. Okay. So, me personally, I won't ask anyone to pay me so that uh, you will be inspired. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? I, I would rather be just living my life. And if my life inspires you, well and good. That's it. That's it. If I come out as inspirational to you, and you know, it's natural and... If it gives you, if it plants a seed in you, if it plants a seed in you for you to grow naturally, it's okay. But I will not ask, like, I'm not going to go to you and, hey, you need to pay me because you were inspired by me. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Okay. That's hilarious. Unless there's a product, you know. Or a specific service that I can perform for you, like uh, that is uh, a paperwork or some sort of uh, product. No, that's transactional. No, that is business. So, meaning to say that these people who try to do this to you guys are just doing business and just making transactions out of your spirituality, which shouldn't cost you a penny. Okay? Now, again... It takes courage to undertake spirituality because it's not an easy road. It's not. It's not, you know, unicorns and rainbows. The other end, after you've gone through it, is unicorns and rainbows. That I, that, that I can say through experience. But it doesn't free you from uh, the next level of challenges, which is what makes life interesting. 
So courage cannot be taught. It can only be gained by overcoming your fears through walking through the door and facing adversities. It's like walking through, you have to walk through the fire. And that's where the courage kicks in. By, because you're afraid, but you still walk through it and you try to live through it. Okay? So if someone is selling you sovereignty, spirituality, <laughs> that's not real. Remember that. Okay? Okay. When we speak of mastery, so the road to true mastery is for you to be independent. So by you independently finding your true calling without anyone else telling you who you are or what you should do, and then, you know, they ask for payment <laughs> just, to, just to have you tell them who you are, <laughs> okay? That's practically insane. So otherwise, your practice will be tainted, you know, of someone else's opinion of you. Okay, so that will derail you from your spiritual path. Okay, your spiritual guides, your ancestors are there to help you and assist you. And they will if you only, you know, sit down quietly and listen. Okay, the first thing you need to learn about spirituality is it takes solitude. That's where the strength comes from, solitude. If you're totally distracted with so many teachers and gurus, then you will never achieve it. You will never have it. Okay? Because your focus is on someone else, not yourself. That's why, you know, when I, when I talk through my videos, uh, you know, I just say, I hope you learned something. And then, you know, just let it go and allow whatever the viewers experience or whatever that thing that they learned progress in their life. I don't attach myself to my audience or the people uh, that uh, learn from me. Why? Because I need that energy to progress in my own spirituality. Do you understand? I'm not selfish that I would have to take credit for someone else's spirituality. That I gave him spirituality. No, that's, that's not good. And that's not right. Okay? That's not right. Okay? So you have to allow the person who received the knowledge you shared to practice and see through their experience if that knowledge is true or if that knowledge is beneficial to them, and then set them free. You know, you don't, and then give them credit for when going through the experience. That's it. You know, you don't attach yourself from, uh, you don't attach yourself to your clients or uh, the people you read for, you, you did tarot reading for, you don't. You have to let that go and allow that person to, uh, you know, whether they listen to you or not, allow that person to experience, you know. I've encountered someone who uh, asked a reading for me, which I, I, I gave her the reading. What's funny is I learned that uh, this person, she didn't follow uh, what I told her and what the divine message was. And then, and then she learned that when she didn't follow it, it got really messed up because... She did the opposite of the advice. But then that's not for me to, uh, to be guilty about. It's because it's her karma. It's her actions. So from, I've also learned from that experience by uh, learning that people won't really listen to you even if you told them the truth. So me even speaking to you right now, there's no guarantee that you would listen to me. But that's okay. That liberates me from uh, any kind of uh, attachment or karma. Uh, as a true teacher, I can let go of and allow the divine to work on your life. If, you, if I gave you the message, you didn't learn from it, 
it's fine as well. Okay? So, for the challenge for tarot readers is not to be attached to their clients because that is the way of spirit. Allowing the, peop the people around you to grow on their own. That's freedom. And that is called sovereignty, I might add. That's sovereignty right there. Okay? So, in other words, you if you allow someone else to taint your spiritual journey and your practice, you will be living somebody else's life and not yours. Okay? So, I would... Uh, I would tell you guys to learn from me, but live your lives, you know. Take that leap of, leap of faith and take that spiritual journey to change yourself for the better. And I hope that you learn from your experiences and progress and do what is right for you and what's right for other people so that you can grow spiritually. And that is... That is where the sovereignty comes in. You free yourself from other people's attachments, okay? And by the time that you mastered uh, detaching from people and allowing yourself to grow, then that is what we call spiritual growth, okay? So deeper spiritual foresight is what, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of services, now we have psychologists and we have the spiritualist, the, the, the healer. Now deeper spiritual foresight is attained by the diviners or the, the divine beings who attain their level of intuition to guide and heal people. And it's something that psychologists can't provide. So it's a, a different service. So psychology is primarily mental, okay? It, it's not as deep as what tarot readers and um, uh, energetic healers can provide uh, their clients. So it's totally different ballgame. But some of the psychologists mistake their psychology as spirituality, okay? That's... that's uh, Psychology is dealing with your logical mind. Okay, spirituality is marrying the logical and the subconscious, which is the uh, the union of the masculine and feminine uh, energies in your existence. So it's a total different ball game. You're not playing on the same level here. So you cannot compare apples to oranges. So it's a different level of healing. But both are necessary, okay? Psychologists are important because they deal with the realities, the mental facets of the realities of the system, the existing system of society. The diviner, the tarot reader, the fortune teller deal with what's underneath, the deeper aspect, the energy the past life, the karma that is not being addressed. Psychologists cannot address the karma. But the diviners can. So it's, it's very important not to disregard or just easily dismiss the tarot readers, okay? And their role in the collective. It's very important, okay? So remember, you as a human being, you having existed in this physical realm or physical plane or dimension are having already the spiritual experience. It's the senses, your eyes, your skin, your, your taste, your, that's the spiritual experience. So a lot of a lot of the entities and beings out there would love to have this spiritual experience here in our dimension. So nobody needs to sell you your spiritual experience. Nobody needs to sell you your own watch or sell you your own car. 
being that uh, this body is a divine vessel, which most people forget. So people who try to sell you your own spirituality is no different from, you know, the church selling you God. <laughs> okay, I cannot overemphasize that. Okay, I hope I drive that point really hard because a lot of people are victimized by these churches. If someone tries to scam you by telling you uh, they can make you spiritual, they can make you godlike, they can make you a good person, just say no thanks. Just tell them, I'm working on myself, discovering myself, learning about myself. Okay, and that is enough. Nobody needs to tell you who you are and what you can be. Okay, and that in itself is very empowering. So, tarot readers are really gifted. You know, they, you know, they study, okay, tarot readers, uh, astrologers, they study. It, it's, it's hard, really, because you, you have to read, uh, read symbols, understand symbols. If, if you, you don't understand, people who are outside this kind of, uh, of realm do not understand how difficult it is to study symbols, which is like so many symbols in so many cultures, and to study the planets, to study uh, the movements of the cosmos. I'm pretty sure the regular person out there wouldn't be interested. Because they're too busy with their job. But then when their life goes down south and they don't know what to do, they need guidance. So that's where healers and tarot readers, energetic healers and tarot readers come in. So it's not right to block or deprive other people from the assistance that the diviners can provide. Uh, don't get me wrong, because even in uh, spirituality and divinity, uh, it's still subject to human uh, polarity. So you, you might encounter, you know, good and bad uh, diviners. They exist. So that's just being fair to acknowledge that there are some out there that practice uh, things that are not supposed to be, okay? All right? So that's, I'm just warning you because they do exist, okay? There's light and dark uh, in everything. So we, in, in this yuga, uh, this yuga is Kali Yuga. So in this particular cycle of time, the light and dark is within every single being, Okay? So when we go to the next cycle, which is year, years and years and years from now, when we switch over to the next cycle, that's when the divine beings will be walking the earth as divine and then the demonic beings will walk on the earth as demons. That's separate. So you can easily tell. Uh, I think uh, Satya Yuga is that kind of timeline. You can easily tell who's good and bad because the good will be good and then the bad will really declare themselves as bad. Unlike in this yuga, this timeline, which is uh, Kali Yuga, it's a timeline of deception. So, But it's also a timeline of great potential. Why? Because you have both energies inside you. Okay? So, and that... And those sides will propel heightened spiritual growth once they are activated. Mind you, having said that, you cannot force awakening in other people. You can just pass the knowledge and, and uh, allow it to take seed. Okay? If it blossoms, well and good. If it doesn't, well, maybe somebody else would be able to plant a seed and... Uh, uh, or some sort of experience will trigger the awakening. But don't pay for 
these things. Let them happen naturally. Okay? Try to study and learn and research. Okay? Learn and study on your own and find the find your own truths. Because if you try to just parrot somebody and just, you know, believe what they say without uh, without question, that's very dangerous. And that's also ignorant. Okay? So the role of diviners such as tarot readers is to help you understand and receive the message. Okay? The, the, in plain words, the tarot readers can read the universe in between the lines and then they can deliver that uh, message to you. Okay? That what people can't perceive, okay, that's what we, we provide you to help you heal. That's it. Okay? Now, if you're an entrepreneur... Uh, for, for entrepreneurs like me, I'm also an entrepreneur. We are problem solvers. But we solve practical problems. Practical problems in a sense, it's practical problems within the system of society. Okay? So as not to confuse spiritual entrepreneurship. That's, that's, that's a hoax, okay? <laughs> People are gonna try to uh, scam you in that kind of way of uh, perception, okay? So, spirituality is the nature of all living beings. So, nobody can sell you spirituality. Otherwise, it will be religion, which is money worship, okay? I hope you're still following me. So, don't believe these uh fixers okay uh if you're already victimized by the church don't add the uh, you know don't add to the injury okay don't worsen your condition okay so i hope i'm uh, i've been very clear on that okay so let's see um what else to discuss um Maybe we can um, probably discuss some red flags. Let's see. What are the red flags that uh, we can discuss? I'm still thinking of it. Uh, so, so, speaking for myself, I'm not going to pretend that I'm uh, like super achiever or super rich or anything like that. I'm just me, you know. I'm just, I'm just Julius Ochoa, okay? My title, Sensei, is my martial arts title. That means teacher. And why I kept that title is because uh, as a sensei, that's when I started to grow spiritually because my martial arts practice seeded my spiritual awakening, okay? So just to be clear on that. Okay, I'm not trying to uh, uh, invent a certain title or anything. That's my martial arts title. And that part of my life, uh, teaching children um, to protect themselves and at the same time, give them, um, you know, pass some spiritual knowledge to them is uh, something that I enjoyed and I'm very much proud of. And I've already uh, passed on to my students but they need to learn. And hopefully, those seeds take root and flourish. If not, well, hopefully someone else comes into their life that would uh, awaken them. Anyway, okay, that's again, that's called detachment. Okay, that's not being, <laughs> that's not being codependent. That's a, because codependency is not good for any kind of interaction. You know, uh, there has to be balance. So, so tools, uh, spiritual tools. So you may see people uh, rocking crystals. Uh, it's just one way, a media for them to connect to the energies of the earth. Okay. And some celestial energies because some of the crystals are uh, meteorites. Okay. So there's nothing wrong about it. There's nothing demonic about it. There's nothing to be afraid of it. So crystals are good. 
Uh, the tarot decks, okay, this is one thing you need to understand about tarot decks, okay? The tarot decks contain symbols, okay, that represent certain energies. And it's just one way for tarot readers and diviners to be able to um, express the energy into a uh, physical form, which is the cards which contain the symbols that represent the energy. And most likely, uh, the the deck is used to and handed over to the client for the client's energy to be read. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Okay, it's just an energetic media of connection. But that the reason why uh, diviners use it is so that it could be easily understand uh, understood by their clients or who they're reading for. That there's a visual representation. Okay, so some tarot readers don't need their decks. They can just channel the message and just tell it directly. I often, you know, whenever I'm up and about with my daily business or my daily task, uh, uh, interacting with people, I would, you know, even without my tarot cards, I, I just tell them what they need to hear. As a, If I receive a divine message for them, hey, this and that. You need to get on top of it, blah, 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 just to help them out. And I don't even ask for anything in return. It's just because they're my friend or I care about them that I tell them the divine message. If And warn them or some, if something's wrong or uh, give them a direction wherein if they need to focus on this thing or look at this thing, an aspect of their life, I just give it to them straight up, you know. If they listen to me, well and good. If they don't, it's fine as well. After all, it's their life. You know, I can't meddle into other people's lives. And I can't change their destiny. Okay? And I'm not the type of person who tries, tries to swap destinies with uh, other people. That's, that's bad. That's wrong. I have my own destiny. I like my destiny. I'm going to go for my destiny. And I know who I am. And that's more than enough, okay? All right, okay. So moving forward, um, some diviners would use pendulums. If you haven't seen a pendulum, it's just something with a uh, weight, a metal or a, a crystal with a string or a chain. So um, this is used uh, to um, be able to communicate with uh, your ancestors or uh, try to sense energy or try to clear energy, or try to move energy, okay? It's similar to a wand, but it just acts on a different function, okay? It's just directing energy, okay? All right? Okay. Wand, pendulum, almost similar thing, okay? It's just that the, the way it works and how the tool is used is different, okay? But it has the same function, which is focusing energy, Okay, and and being able to uh, being able to make a connection with the divine. Okay, so if you encounter someone using a pendulum, don't be afraid. Okay, all right. For charts and planetary alignments, most of the astrologers use this, and this is how uh, they are able to um, give you information about yourself. You know, the, these are more of understanding yourself and your behaviors. And and if you don't understand yourself and your behaviors and your characteristics and your your um, your vessel's composition, the energies that you carry, you won't be able to heal. Okay, so it's necessary for uh, for them to be able to give guidance to use these tools. So. I'm educating you about it so that uh, you won't be scammed uh, by people who tell you that these are demonic things, okay? That's not true, okay? All of the above are all useless without the diviner or the person who is the conduit or the one, the chosen one who has the intuitive gifts, okay? So... The above are not external. The, those tools are not external. Okay, those are tools. And they're useless without the internal. So if a person tells you that 
oh, they're all external. They're not right. Because without the diviner, the person who is connecting to the energy, the medium, those things, you know, the tarot deck will be just plain cards. The crystals will be rocks. The pendulum will just be a string. The wand will just be a piece of wood. And uh, birth charts and uh, planetary alignments are just paper. Okay? So the diviner is very important. They play a role in order, in order for these tools to function. And connecting with the divine is not demonic. I can clearly guarantee you that it's not demonic. Connecting with your ancestors is not demonic. This is a the you know the church lied to people in, that they tried to colonize back in the day. And even now, the, the old colonies are still having the same mentality of perpetuating the lie that these divination tools are demonic. No, they're not. It's connecting with our ancestors, our ancestors, our creators. Okay? They're very important. And there's no such thing as any kind of difference between monotheistic and polytheistic. It's just... The divine in different forms. So don't be divided by these religious groups who claim that they're, they're the ones with the truth. They're the ones who's right. The truth is in everything. You just need to find it. And you will find it through discernment, good judgment, and by enriching your knowledge. Okay. I think I've said enough and I've, uh, I've driven my point. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything else that you need to know about spirituality so that people won't sell you false spirituality? I'm thinking, okay, red flags, red flags. Um, I wrote some notes about red flags uh, last night. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm. Okay, so, all right, uh, I, I'm checking the time here. I've, I'm already past one hour and 30 minutes. So it would be, uh, this is going to be a long video and would probably be chopped up in different parts. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this information helps. And please stop selling spirituality and stop buying sp spirituality and start practicing and uh, going through your spiritual journey in a natural, healthy way, okay? Do what is right. Do what is right. That's it, okay? I'll leave it at that, all right? I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. Again, this is your Sensei Julius Ochoa from Okami Sigma Universe. Thank you for watching.